There are some seeds. We don't bite. Oh, does she? Okay, well. <laughs> Welcome to the April 10th, 2024 uh, trustee, Board of Trustees meeting. We will begin the meeting like we do every uh, meeting. We will um, start with a moment of silence. Tonight is the moment of silence is for one of our employees, Keith Duncan, who is our public works foreman, sister passed away recently, uh, Brenda Duncan. Um, services have already been held and um, Brenda is survived by her son Christopher and three grandchildren. We also want to um, honor Rick Miners, owner and founder of Miners Meats over here on Cleves, Warsaw. Um, he found it in 1983. His wife, Jenny, children, Ben and David, and five grandchildren. Uh, so we'll start with the pledge and then the moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Mr. Luby, approval of the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes from the Board of Trustees regular meetings held on March 13th and March 27th, 2024, and dispense with the readings. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve the payment of overtime for pay period ending April 2nd, 2024. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Motion to approve bills for payment. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion pass passes. Significant transactions, Mr. Luby? Yes. In this meeting, we had a uh, check to the Kaiser Corp for $42,000. That was for 20 indoor cycle bikes for the uh, new athletic club. We had a payment to JS Held our DTS representative for $49,000. And we had a check to Alzar Studio for $114,000, which was for DTS furniture. And our payroll on 328 was $407,000. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Okay, tonight we have a, some press, a special presentations. So, Chief. <clears throat> We're going to put you on front and center right away, my friend. <laughs> so tonight we're doing a, a ceremony of swearing in for our newest police officer, Michael Petrusti. Um, first, I'd like to thank you all for letting us celebrate this special occasion. Um, I will tell you that the first time I met Michael, and don't blush here, buddy, <laughs> is I knew that he'd be an excellent fit for us. It took us a couple bites at the apple, but we've, we finally got him. So um, also, I'd like to thank everybody for being here, especially the ones that work with us on a daily basis. We really appreciate you just for being here to support the, our newest police officer. A special thank you to Michael's wife, Lindsay, and family first, obviously sharing Michael with us, because obviously if you're married to a first responder, there's a lot of stressors that go into our lives and with shift work and going to court and, and just the stress of the job. So. Obviously, we're only successful as successful as our spouses allow us to be. So they take, they're the glue of the family. So thank you, Lindsay. Michael is a lifelong resident of Dowie Township, which obviously I know everybody here obviously loves that. And, you know, that's, that's what makes Michael such a great ambassador for us. He attended Oak Hill schools. <laughs> During his childhood and graduated from Oak Hills in 2014. <laughs> He was a police explorer for our police department, which obviously is, is obviously a plus for us as well. He obtained a, a certificate as a personal trainer from Cincinnati State in 2016. Graduated from Cincinnati State in 2017 with an associate's degree in, in health and fitness. Michael worked for the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office from 2017 to 2024. He was assigned to corrections from August of 17 to July of 22 and was promoted to the road and work with the road patrol from July of 22 to February 24 when we stole them from the county. <laughs> he did graduate from the Butler Tech Police Academy uh, November 2021. Michael was married to his wife, Lindsay, and they have two children, his son, Brooks, and daughter, Ella. In his free time, Michael enjoys spending time with family, working out, 
in training in jujitsu. I think I spelled. I don't even know if I spelled that. Did I spell right? Yes, sir. In MMA. Apparently, I hear you got roughed up today a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> don't break anything, my friend. So, Lindsay, if you want to join us uh, this evening, Michael will be pinned by his wife, Lindsay, and uh, Mrs. Starts, if you want to do the honors. Skyler. Sorry, Skyler. <coughs> State your name. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution and laws. That I will support the Constitution and laws. Of the United States of America. Of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws. Of the State of Ohio. Of the State of Ohio. And the resolution of the Township of Delhi. All the duties incumbent upon me. And perform all the duties incumbent upon me. As a police officer of the Delhi Township Police Department. As a police officer of the Delhi Township Police Department. So help me God. So help me God. Words, Trustee Seavey? Well, I already gave a little Highlander <laughs> proud cheer on this, but hey, you know, any opportunity I get, I, I don't miss. But congratulations, and we so welcome you, and your talents and your services to Delhi are, will be so appreciative. Lindsay, thank you for sharing him, and um, best of everything, best of luck with Delhi. I know you'll love it here. Trustee Davis? About the same. Thanks for saying yes to the... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, took a couple bites, and it was. And uh, the nice thing about Hamilton County, it's kind of groomed you to, to get to this point, and hopefully you've, you've learned a lot on the way. But uh, Delhi is a very special town. It truly is, and I know you know this being a lifelong resident, and uh, I think the, the residents will fall in love with you, and you fall in love with them, and you serve them well, as uh, the chief has guaranteed that you will. So... Uh, <laughs> I was, it was interesting to watch him try and spit out the words jujitsu and a few other foreign languages maybe that you, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, no, God bless your journey here and, and just thanks for being part of the Delhi family. It's very much appreciated. And thank you. Thank you for saying yes to Delhi. Goodbye to Hamilton County. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> we don't get them often, but we sure do like it. Um, instead of them taking one from us. Um, but yeah, looking forward to seeing you on the road. Please be safe out there. Thank you again, Lindsay, too. And be safe when you're on the mat there. And don't let my nephew rough you up too much, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. It's also Should nice to see. Um, it's also nice to see the others in, in the department out on a night like tonight, some that are, you know, working, some that just wanted to be here for this moment. So that's quite a true testament for you and, and for who you are loaning us here for X amount of time there, Lindsay. We appreciate that. And even other jurisdictions that I see in the back. God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for coming out and supporting the event. There you mm -hmm. go. Right. Great group of people you'll be working with. Jim? Yep. Congratulations. <clears throat> Welcome to the township. And also like to thank the DCPA for being here tonight and supporting Michael as well. So thank you and good luck. Thank you. Okay. So if you would like... Um, you can leave the meeting now. You do, if you came just for the swearing in, you do not have to stay for our five page <laughs> meeting of notes, but uh, we'd love to have you stay if you'd like. But again, thank you to everybody for being here and supporting him and bye bye. We do have an exciting presentation on Del High Athletic Club coming up. I know. <clears throat> I can't wait. <clears throat> <clears throat> so the dojo he goes to our 
and we're back. All right, we have a second special presentation tonight on our De De Del High Athletic Club update. All so, Michael. <clears throat> That's hard to follow. Uh, that was impressive. And uh, we, we heard that he was a personal trainer, so yeah. I was hoping he would stay. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be, we're going to be after him. But I want to, uh, if you go to the next slide, is introduce uh, some of our team here that are involved uh, this week. First of all, our new general manager, Greg Gillum. Okay. And uh, Greg comes to us from uh, with a great um, uh, experience with Crunch Fitness, which is one of the uh, top franchises in the country in fitness. And he opened up eight. Uh, crunch fitness sites in this area, in northern Kentucky and in, uh, in uh, Cincinnati. So uh, he's also a uh, former Navy, uh, right? There was Navy? Yes, sir. Yep. <laughs> Navy, and then uh, he also uh, played football at Thomas Moore, uh, and he also played arena football for uh, the, uh, who, what are the teams for Cincinnati? The Cincinnati Commandos and the, the Northern Kentucky uh, River Monsters. Right. And then, uh, there's another Space Coast Predator in Florida. <laughs> wow, okay. So we're really lucky. He's uh, been not only a week now, but he's really hit the, the ground running. A couple peop other people from our team, uh, Sarah Bladder, <coughs> area manager with uh, Health Fitness, who's uh, been my uh, right-hand person. Or I, I think I've been <coughs> her right-hand person. Actually, uh, she's been a great help. She's an area manager that oversees a number of health fitness sites around the country, and uh, we really feel... Um, uh, blessed to have her uh, on our team. And Anastasia Glover is uh, all the way from Dallas. Uh, she mm. uh, is our marketing manager for our community facing sites and the sites that uh, sell memberships. We do a lot of corporate clubs, but she's over the ones that um, are more retail and generate a lot of revenue. And, and uh, I always say she's our secret sauce uh, because uh, our marketing is really done really well along with our sales, allows us to really um, you know, I, I want to I want to brag on her. The last three years, 2022, our clubs averaged 20% growth in uh, membership. Uh, last year, 19% growth in membership, and after the first three months of this year, 18% growth. You know, wow. so we keep thinking it's not going to keep going, but it, it keeps going. So, um, well, I'm going to hand it over to Sarah for the rest of the presentation, and we're going to sit down and give you a little bit of All right. Nice Thank you for being here. <coughs> In that mic. Updates, but I first wanted to say it's been such a pleasure being a part of this project. Um, it truly has been an honor. This facility is just absolutely amazing. And I've spent only a little bit of time in Delhi Township, but I can already tell it's just going to enhance what already is such a special community. So it's just really, really great. But um, so we do have a couple updates for you all. Um, we're going to start with recruiting. Obviously, we met Craig, who is our general manager. Aaron Grant is our membership manager. He began um, in the beginning of March. We have a candidate that we um, extended an offer to for uh, fitness and aquatics manager. Um, same with front desk and housekeeping supervisor, so we have offer um, extended for that as well. And then we are conducting membership rep interviews along with a number of other uh, roles that we're hiring for. So. Um, the most Initial 
we are out there. <laughs> People want to find us. They can. Um, so pre-sales are live. We launched on Monday, and we are so happy to say that we already have over 180 inquiries in the last three days. So, and those have all been to the website. Um, the location, we were a little bit nervous. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to have pre-sales at the Delhi Athletic Club. So it's just, it's just amazing that we can, and we can just show off the facility. Um, we've created different poster boards that have renderings and things like that. So it's really been great. And then tours and enrollment hours are Monday through Friday, nine to six. So for right now. And, and we'll then that's expand those. As, as, so just as, as uh, we're getting another membership rep hired, and uh, we'll be able to expand those hours for the end of the evening too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and the, that uh, page that was on there, that was the inquiry form from the, thank you, <laughs> Skylar, from the website. So that's how someone, if they're interested, they'll kind of fill that out and then it goes directly to our team. And then we can reach out and follow up with them. Um, so facility and equipment, we have a couple updates. The pool is filling as we speak. <laughs> it might take two weeks, but it's gonna get done. So <laughs> very good. Um, we also did confirm life fitness equipment installed scheduled for mid-May. So we should have that all set to go. It's a three day, it's, I'm sorry, it's a two day install with a third day of just follow up and making sure everything is in its right place. Um, and then the Kaiser indoor cycle bikes, those will be installed the, uh, in the beginning of May. So. And that is all I have for updates. Any mm. questions? Lovely. <laughs> Trustee? Well, Sarah, I already asked you a question this afternoon and just Let's go over it one more time. The form that's on the website right now is an information form. It's not your enrollment form. So don't get confused. And I It's updated now. It's up to, Oh, good. All right. So so now when they when they pull that up, they'll see that that's an information form only. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for correcting that cuz I was a little threw people off a little bit. Thank you. Okay. So, so Sarah, people can come up and just drop in. They, they don't do. have to wait for you exactly. to contact them. Right. Yeah, you can just pop in anytime. We encourage it. And you can enroll on the spot. On or the spot, right okay. There. Yeah. Okay. And payments will be taken out of uh, uh, we, payment we options. How are payment yeah, options? Payment options are through um, an, uh, ACA for like a you know through, account, account or a credit card, but we prefer the bank account. Okay. Yeah. So not a monthly. Yeah, we come up and pay month and. It, are you locked in for a year? Is it, it are is they contractual? 12 months. 12 months. Yeah. Okay. And then after that 12 months, it is an open-ended agreement, so you can cancel any time. You're basically on a month-to-month -month after the 12 months. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trustee Davis? Uh, for those watching at home, we remind them the pricing and all those wonderful, um, as best you can. So about 67 bucks a month for a single, but for a whole family, about 120. And there's a break by age and your so on and so forth. Okay, so it's per month, ladies and gentlemen, not a year, as some people have been saying. It is per month. Okay. I just want to get these details out there. Are people able to find how to do their directions as far as into the facility, where they need to go to? I followed those today. Yeah. Uh, one tip, the construction guys tend to move them out of their way. <laughs> so you may want to occasionally check to make sure the arrows are going where you would like them to go. <laughs> Right, 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 yeah, it's all about the, uh, I, I do want to share a story that Skylar told me, is he was just kind of hanging back yesterday, right? I was. And a, a woman came in, who must have had an appointment, whatever, and she said, I followed these signs, I thought, where am I going to park? And then, voila, all these parking spots are here. So ladies and gentlemen, you keep asking where the parking is, it's at the front door, which is actually the back of the building. Um, so yeah, there's parking, so keep going all the way around. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's good, good to hear and good to see. Yes, yep, 
Again, there you go. <laughs> there is parking. It is right. Let's see. You got your little red thing. There you go. It is right back All here. All of that. Yeah. Yep. There's the main, right here is the main entrance to the athletic club. Yes. All right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. No, thank you. Again, if somebody came just for that presentation, feel free to, to leave at this time. Thank you. Thank you for staying. I know you had to, you, you stayed longer. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, as, as we're transitioning here, uh, it, it was great. I was, I was on site over at the athletic club about 4.30, and uh, I was actually done with the meetings, and I was about to head out the door, and strangers, you know, uh, started walking down. I'm like, I'm not used to seeing, you know, just, just residents, members of the public on, on our construction site. So I hung back for a second just to, just to see who was coming in. And uh, yeah, sure enough, people are organically already, you know, they're, they're coming on site, they're interested. Um, I had somebody tell me today while, while we were there, um, you know, doing a tour that they didn't even realize that this was back here. They just thought it was apartments. So, you know, the, the word is finally getting out. So. Hallelujah. All right, very good. Okay, we have a public hearing to open. Mr. Mooby. We have a motion to open the public hearing to discuss projects included in the 2024 through 2026 Community Development Block Grant applications. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. The hearing is open. Ms. Pearson. I, I'm providing an update to you from the first public hearing, which we um, had on April 27th. I mean, March 27th, thank you, yes. Um, and since then, we have received feedback from two residents. Um, one resident asked that the township trustees consider um, changing the gravel walkways near the Floral Paradise Gardens to um, asphalt walkways. Um, she sent a picture of the recent storm damage of the gravel, so um, that was one comment. And another person asked about um, providing transportation for school children from, from um, Oak Hill schools and, and private schools to leave their schools and come to the Cultural Arts Center, to Delhi Town Square. That is, is not something that's eligible. The, the money that we're provided has to be used for capital projects, um, given the restraints for this limit on social services with the county. So um, with that, I, um, we, we do not have to submit anything until April 30th, and our public comment period is open until the 26th of April. So I, if any additional comments are received, I will bring them to you at the next um, trustee meeting. But the, um, the funding can be used for several projects, as I mentioned in March, um, and the staff is recommending that we um, use the funding for completing ADA paths at the at Delhi Park, uh, possibly including the Floral Paradise Gardens paths as requested. Um, also possibly um, renovating the large restrooms at the Senior Center. Just as a reminder, we get about, we can ask for at about $160,000 or more. So we're guaranteed that our share is 160000 um, so that's that's a second project that's recommended and a third that's being recommended is repairing the greenhouse um, roof and renovating that as an event space um, since the bathrooms are there and the parking is there and we're going to be getting into the wedding business um, with Delhi Town Square um, there are some other eligible projects that include um, adding ADA paths from the parking lot to the tennis courts at the park renovating smaller bathrooms at the senior center and there were some um, ideas about street improvements and sidewalks, but the money is not enough to make a difference for for those kinds of projects since they're so cost they're intensive cost intensive. Okay. Just for reference, the the sidewalk program that we would be considering is probably more in the neighborhood of three to four million. So this probably yeah. wouldn't pay for engineering, no, which no, we exactly. couldn't do no. anyway. So. Or asphalt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, my question with this here is, you know, we, we noted which ones are highly recommended. So some of them don't have costs behind them. Have we even gotten costs on those to know how close we will get or go over the 160000 We have not, so I apologize. Okay. It's been a little world of a whirlwind the yeah. last couple of weeks, but I will get some estimates and so share we'll those with you. We'll have something by the yes. time we have to make a decision. Oh, yes, I'll share ahead of time. Yes. Okay. And, and keep in mind <laughs> that, you know, even you know once we select these projects uh you know we have multiple years to to spend this money 
things can shift. You know, right. we may have to do additional notifications to, to the community or to, uh, you know, Hamilton County, but we can shift our focus. So, okay. you know. We, we are required to provide a public hearing before actually changing the application. Okay. Yeah. And, and then as a reminder, the, town, the county asks us to prioritize the applications both with which projects and what timing we would like, and they will decide in the month of May um, what they're what they're planning to put into their three-year cycle plan, um, and and so it's it's they they rely on us to request what we want, and 99.9% .9 of the time they're able to honor that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Trustee CV. No, I'm. Trustee Davis. Nope. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Troy. We appreciate that. <clears throat> All right. Do we have a motion? Motion to close the public hearing to discuss projects included in the 2024 through 2026 CDBG grant applications. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. All right. Trustee Correspondence, Trustee Seavey? Uh, yes. I had a call from a resident about excessive speeding on her residential street and I just want you all to know that when you make these kind of calls we always turn them over either to Ron Rippinger or our police department and let them follow up on it. And this particular street will now have a, a speeding monitor and we have upped the police monitoring of that particular location. So um, if you're experiencing this, share it, let us know and let us get it handled. Secondly, okay, it's spring. Everyone's out cutting their grass, we hope. Right, Tony Roach? Yeah, he gave me a thumbs, thumbs up. But let me remind everyone not to blow the grass that you cut or the leaves that you blow into the street. Number one, it's a safety hazard for bicycles and motorcycles. And number two, it gets down into our stormwater. So the good news is hopefully we'll see spring here soon and the grass will grow and you'll have the opportunity to cut it and not blow it into the street. That's all I have. Thank you. Trustee Davis. <clears throat> Thank you. I believe we all received a, an email from our uh, incredible uh, volunteers from our Floral Paradise Gardens. This just came on in about 3.15 this afternoon, so I have not fully read it, but uh, they are uh, talking about the Floral Paradise Gardens and in connection to the dog park that is being proposed in that area there. Um, they raised some concerns, certainly uh, just from the gazebo and the different parties and events that go on right there, which would be right next to the dog park. Uh, graduation parties, family reunions, baby showers, bridal showers, you name it. Much less people are there cooking and everything else. Doesn't seem like a logical place to put a dog park right next to a smoking grill with burgers. You get it. Um, so there's some good points that they bring up there um, besides the smells. but. Uh, most dog owners are responsible, but what about those that don't? So they bring up that. And then they talk about the Floral Paradise Gardens, um, and which are looking great in the time and energy and everything that they've been pouring into that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, but they bring that, that up in, in conjunction with parking and all these other uh, concerns. But um, I will not go much further into it. It is uh, actually from several of them on this committee. Um, but I do think this is something that we should look at and, and maybe uh, discuss um later but we appreciate the email and uh doesn't fall on deaf ears i can assure you that we'll look at that and again we want it to be right also so thank you thank you um and i have kudos to go out to our um, some of our employees again um firefighters katie lacasto and don burke and lieutenant scott summers participate in the cincinnati heart mini marathon and walk last month and they walked with a resident that they helped save last spring after he went into cardiac arrest. I don't think there's a, a, a better way to pay uh, tribute to our residents is to walk with them on, in their journeys. So way to go. Also, congratulations to firefighter Sarah Braun, who was featured in an International Women's Day video from Bullard, B-U-L-L-A-R-D, the safety equipment company. So our people are getting recognized, our ladies and our men are getting recognized. So again, thank you for being such a good uh, representative, Sarah. And thirdly, I want to wish well our team of firefighters who are climbing for air this Sunday down at Paul Brown Stadium. They used to climb Crew Tower, but now they go up and down all the steps in Paul Brown Stadium. So 
we wish them well and uh, hope they end up on top like they have for how many years? They do a great job. Um, and um, so God bless you for representing us well. And, and that's, that's my piece. All right. Thank you. So now we go into the fire department. Uh, we have voluntary resignation. <clears throat> We have a motion to accept the voluntary resignation of part-time firefighter paramedic Drake Oros, effective April 8th, 2024. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carried. Where is he going, Chief? He has accepted a full-time job with Fairfield Township Fire Department in Butler County. So I hate to see Drake go. He's spent a number of years with us. So it was good to see him develop as a wonderful employee and really appreciate his service to our community. Like a daddy, you train him and send yeah. him out to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's in a good way. I mean, yeah. he's definitely made a lot for himself. And, you know, right. we, we wish we could certainly hang on to that talent and things, but it's it's a matter of timing and certainly can't knock him for passing right. up a right. Good luck job. and thank you, Drake. <clears throat> All right, hiring, though. Here we go. <laughs> we have a motion to approve the hiring of Sean H. Conley as part-time firefighter EMT in the fire department. At the rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the Delhi Firefighters Association, upon successful completion of a voice stress analyzer, pre employment physical, and drug testing, effective on April 10th, 2024. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Welcome, Sean. <clears throat> Any updates? No. Um, actually, uh, March has been pretty slow for us, and that would be the last. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Statistically, we've been up uh, pretty pretty big in January and February so it's nice to have a reasonable um, number of runs in, in March we are still up double digits so percentage wise right now for the year but no we're looking to bring Sean on uh, he is filling that that vacancy and that was the only one we had so we are with Sean coming on uh, gets through all his things then we should we'll be at 100 percent right filled yep and, and nobody's flipped the fire truck <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So there's Sorry. a little there's a little thing <laughs> there's a little thing called karma that I will not touch that subject. Okay, yes. I feel bad for the 24s. Yes, <laughs> that was that was City of Cincinnati Department 24. Yeah. It's on oh, yeah. uh, Glenway Avenue by Rapid Run. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. They're very lucky. Nobody nobody was hurt. How, how do they even upright a full pumper like that? Carefully. Carefully? Yeah. Good, Skyler. Slowly. Yeah. Slowly. Um, the trucks are quite heavy, and the water is quite significant right. weight. Same thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, okay, Parks and Recreation. We, <clears throat> we have a motion. <clears throat> we have a motion to adjust the salary rate of Parks and Recreation Director Randy M. Supi to $78,026 per year, effective March 28, 2024. Well, Randy, <laughs> so moved. <laughs> All those in favor? Yes. yes. Uh, just to explain, um, it's, uh, probation is over, and therefore the raise uh, happens then instead of when everybody else got their raises, right? Yes. All right, so yep. thank you for everything you do, Randy. Department update. Uh, yeah, so we have um, just a couple projects going. Uh, <clears throat> I believe Skylar has put up our light project for the stage concert area. Uh, it is in progress. We're getting bids, uh, getting the materials together. Uh, a kind of ex explanation on it, there will be uh, a total of six light posts coming in with two lights on each. Uh, the outside lighting will uh, shine down on all the roadways and parking lot area. Those will be on dust to dawn timers. Uh, they'll come on. They'll help out for uh, exiting. Uh, everything walking going away from the process and then the inside uh, lights will be on uh, switch modes or timers what we'll put on when we need them and that'll access you know for after concerts after events and they'll be on for a cleanup breakdown you know that kind of thing as well Good. so process is in the works right now uh, it'll provide excess lighting I believe for that entire area it's at least half that area for now mm -hmm. uh, it looks like it's going to uh, the estimate on the lighting, it seems a little dim right now. I think it's going to be more than what it's showing. So, And we are going with total electric. We're going to get everything set in. We're going to drill the post holes. Uh, that way we can control a little bit better you know, other than solar. And solar is an option down the road for around, around the lake options, uh, around floor paradise walkways as well. Uh, we're keeping them in contact uh, down the road. So. Okay. 
will these be installed in time for the first concert? I'm hoping to, yes. We're going to be uh, less mess as possible, uh, trenching, small trenches, uh, okay. drilling for the post. So, yeah, if not, it'll be a pretty close time frame. We're right. working on it right now. Right. Permits, you know, coming I, up. Yeah, we know how that A little works. bit of waiting time, but hopefully. Yes, mm -hmm. understand. Yeah. Trustee Seeping? Oh, I, it was dark at night when the concert was over, so I'm really excited yeah. that we're going to yeah. make it a little safer for people walking through the grass. Yes. That's super. Thanks, Randy. Trustee Davis? Uh, no, yeah. mine on the lights, no. I have a different question. Okay, that's but, fine. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Anything else? Uh, just a couple going. As uh, Joy mentioned, we do have the HVAC uh, going in the senior center. We do have the windows uh, being made for those as well. So that's that's another project being done. And we are waiting for MobileCom to get their equipment in. Uh, a few jobs going up through Floral Paradise as well. So, All right. Perfect. Yep. Any questions? None here. Thank you. Obviously, Mr. Davis does. I just have one, and, uh, and I talked to Skyler about this also, and I actually went up there, which, first of all, thanks for the, uh, for the work that you've put in on possible dog park up there yep. at Floral Paradise. Um, I do think more things need to be discussed. I was up there earlier, and it was ironic seeing the email um, this late this afternoon, um, it, 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 I'm having issue, I, I guess one with some few of the homes that are right there and literally it's in their backyard, right on their property line, I'm sure. And looking at how it, it's already kind of landscaped and it goes down. If I understand it would be coming up about, it would have to come up about 10 feet in order to be leveled. Is that right? Skylar? Uh, it, it is a, from, from one end of the, of that, fenced in area it would be about a 10 feet great right. change yeah. and on the other end of it is a, is a huge tree there yeah. um and it literally the gazebo and everything is right there and that is something that we're, we're doing more and more things for and if you look at it and just it's it, it just to me it, it doesn't make sense it'd be great if we could put it there when we could have yeah. our dog park and everyone would be happy but looking at it just the optics of it and and the events that do occur at that gazebo with the cookout with the grills and everything yeah. else it just looks like you know if it was just you and your family and your two dogs it's perfect <laughs> but when you have that and then my concern about others coming in from other local jurisdictions bringing their wonderful um dogs over and just it just to me it just it looked like a recipe for failure and so I do think I would like to have a deeper discussion, maybe not tonight, but maybe in, and I know you've some suggestions as to yeah. where, I mean, let's, I'm not on that part yet, <laughs> but I will say, I can tell you we're not, let's just start there. And by looking at it, and I would want you guys to go up and I know you've looked at it, you've seen it, take a real good look at it and, and just see what would have to be done there. Um, and there's your beautiful gazebo. And then that spot to the right of that. And, um, that actually goes down as you are heading north on that it actually goes down and then you see that the huge tree there in comparison to the other uh field that is be on the uh that would be on the west side. on the west side of floral paradise the, that big lot there which i know is supposed to be used for soccer or whatever are you showing that also skyler yeah i'm, I'm trying to follow along with your narrative see it down the bottom yeah the that is <laughs> Now that is one big open level field, and I know we talk about using it for uh, soccer, and and I don't know how much it is used. Um, logistics, it just would make more sense there because you're completely away from the festivities there. You're down the hill from the Floral Paradise Gardens, where it's still a beautiful walk around there. That tree area down to the to the south of that line that is all fenced and treed so anyone there on poinsettia has is going to be blocked they're not going to see much because there is some some uh, wooded area there um so would that be one cheryl i i don't know uh in that email they it was funny because they mentioned a couple other spots um which things that we've already discussed which by the way for those watching at home and those here this has been an ongoing discussion for several months I think all of us are united with the fact if we're going to do a dog park, we want to do it right the first time. So that's why we want to make sure we, we, we get it right. Um, I just wonder if the objections to that area are still standing. That's, and maybe Randy can look into uh, that because I remember the whole thing was about soccer use and soccer fields. Yeah, there was many soccer fields there. And the downside, you're going to, 
you can't you're not going to please everyone all the time so you know there are downsides there are upsides in different spots uh the one choice we did make on that was because there is a nice shade tree the big giant tree that was where it is uh we were going to try to work around the higher fencing with it blocked off on the one side uh with some landscaping like some nicer trees along there so but the access for water uh parking restrooms that was the big uh the big draw to that area right there so, but there are, you know, changes are mm-hmm. always welcome, you know, that's yeah. not set in stone anyway. For, for clarification on mine, Randy, just so you're hearing what I'm, what I'm saying, this is not to me a point of not pleasing everyone. You're always going to get a couple. Yeah. No, this to me is problem avoidance. When you talk about having several dogs running through there and someone trying to have their, I don't care what it is, bridal shower, graduation part, it makes absolutely no sense. Either that or stop renting the gazebo. And you can use that as a water fountain for your dogs to have a drink. But I would not do both. Yeah, that, that was area. one of my alternatives as well, to in, include that into the uh, dog park area. Uh, once again, we'll lose that as a rentable shelter as well, though. So that's And yeah. that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why it's well, like. Well, was I'd, I'd like to know how much we actually <laughs> did rent it and how it was used. And let's, let's you know. Let's look at all the data that surrounds that space, yes. both spaces, the use by the soccer field, the yeah. use of the gazebo. Let's figure that out. I can definitely get you numbers and uh, statistics on that thing. So, yeah. so yeah. the soccer game's on that field, which has always been... Uh, as of right now, there's lacrosse, there's soccer, there's football practice. But who? Like, is it just a pickup game? Like, no, no, no. They're all um, organizations that come and uh, reserve. Okay. So, so is that prior to or now because we have that other field over by the the playground no, they've been doing that for years now so okay. yeah it's been but, it's been but before we had that one yes, yes. Oh, the other one over by the playground yeah that seems to be a newer oh yeah the one that was filled in by the playground yeah yeah the new one that was a newer yes. field randy so, if, okay. if we decided that we wanted to use that big open field where would you put those others that you just spoke about football lacrosse soccer uh, there was really no other place right now. That's that we it, that's, yeah, that's, I'm just yeah. curious. It yeah. really isn't any. There's not a big enough open flat space as well. You know, mm. we've talked about it many times. And honestly, I think when uh, Mr. DeLong was here, we wrote that up years ago too. Uh, like you said, conversations have been going on for a couple of years now. There's been talks maybe down on Rapid Run where the uh, demolition occurred. Uh, there's down at the Kneehaus property that we had purchased. Um, many spots, but it just is – you know what is feasible and what is uh decided upon yeah mm-hmm. so. which in the beginning the preliminary discussions when we talked about rapid run it was just like no 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 but now that's mm-hmm. i think an option to look at again and again to do it right and do it do it do it great um because the, the park and with, with you and your department and those before you have been so successful at creating life and excitement in that yeah. park we're getting it and that's awesome um but i think we just you know have to be sure we yeah, at some point you have a, a yeah. limitation on uh, room and area, so yes. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, and we can talk about that again, too. Yeah, okay. Know. Very good. Thank yeah. you. I do have a question. Yep. I saw in the Tuesday notes that elder so- football or softball is starting in Delhi Park, not the school. Elder plays baseball uh, it, in it, our, our, our park? They don't have their no, own? No, that's a um, – it was originally an elder softball league that they uh, – from um, – Alumni, I'm sorry, Alum- yes, alumni. They had initially moved to uh, West Side Sports yes. Park and then okay, closed so down. That's now what they're it back. Is. Yes. I'm sitting there going, yes. Elder High School. They, they have all that <laughs> land up there on the top of Wyoming, and they're uh, coming they, to. Del- okay. They have come back. They use good. it uh, Sunday well, mornings all the time. Yeah. I'm glad. I just wanted well. to clarify yeah, it was yes. the high school. Or- it's an alumni yes. league. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank yep. you. Old timers. We are oh, them. Oh, sure. oh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, but, yeah. but I hear a lot about the old timers baseball league. Yep. So. They may only be thirty-five or forty. So. Oh, there oh. we go. Oh, we Younger old timers. Yeah, there you go. All right. Any other questions? Anything else for us? Uh, that should be about it for now. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. All guys. right. All right. Police department. We have a hiring recommendation here. <clears throat> We have a motion to approve the hiring of Ronald L. Soupy as Auxiliary Police Officer in the Police Department at a pay rate of $42.37 per hour, effective April 10th, 2024. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Any updates, Chief? Chief, <laughs> did you check references on this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like uh, maybe 25 years of them. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just for the people watching, uh, Officer Soupy obviously retired two months ago. We're bringing him back as an auxiliary so he can make use of the, all the training experience he has for special events, et cetera. So, 
You know, they get they get paid, auxiliaries get paid when they're mandated to work. So it's not like he's carrying a salary all year long, but it's anytime he's going to training or other special events, they get paid. So it's a big help. He'll be the third auxiliary officer we have, so we're glad to have him. Great. Okay. So updates, uh, we are doing a, a gun safety class that we finalized today um, on May 4th. So it's on our website um, from 9.30 to 1, or 9.30 to 11, um, here at the, uh, the, the administration building. Um, we're also going to be doing a something similar that we did last year with the autism event we did, but we're going to actually do a cookout. Um, I've got a local sponsor that's willing to pay for everything, and we're going to do a cookout and have special needs children come and meet the officers and check out the cruisers and everything. So just some outlook and, you know, open our, our, our guys and girls to obviously the kids that sometimes we have, we have struggles with when we go to their homes. So um, other than that, I really don't have anything else if you have any questions. I'm good. The gun safety class, you want people to sign up or they Correct. just show up? Correct. It's, 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 okay. it's uh, RSVP only because obviously we got limited space. Okay. We had one at uh, Rapid Run Middle School uh, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we only had about 15 people show up. So we want to RSVP. And if we get a lot of RSVPs, we'll get a different site and we'll move it. And the okay. one before that, I think, sold out. And it was here. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we had... We had about 50 here, so it's for it's for adults and children. So obviously we cover just the vast different information as far as how to handle a gun, what to do if you see one or find one, or we cover laws, et cetera. So it's a great class. Okay. Trustee Davis? No? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Public Works. Do you have another hiring mo recommendation? We have a motion to approve the hiring of Michael K. Lips as seasonal maintenance worker in the Public Works Department at $15 per hour upon successful completion of a background check and pre-employment drug testing effective on April 10th, 2024. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Motion carries. Welcome, Michael. Yes, we're excited to get him hired. He's a longtime Delhi resident, which is always good to hear. But uh, yeah, it should work out good. Okay. Very good. Any updates? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the season. I don't know. I think they do road construction all winter nowadays. But uh, <laughs> road closure on Devil's Backbone between April 15th and 19th. That's night and day. That's just up from Rapid Run. Um, typically, they put a worst-case scenario of time frame. So we're hoping they open it maybe a day or two sooner. So will that affect the businesses right there at the corner of Rapid Run and Devil's Backbone? Um, it could. And they're notified? Um, let's see. They I, know they, I know they sent letters out. I don't know the exact surrounding. Okay. But, but Rapid Run will be open. They can get in off Correct. of Rapid Run. Right. Yes, Just not there. off yeah. of Devil's Yeah, Run. they'll let them in there. All the way around. And yeah. Chief well, knows, too, which way they're. I just sent it to them. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll put it out on Veer the day or two before so people don't forget. Okay. And that's April 11th to the 14th? 15th through 19th. Oh, I was close. Um, okay. 15th to the 19th. Okay. And then if you've been through there at all, the Greenwell gas line replacement um, for, for Duke has started. So they're working kind of close to Foley. I've been trying to stay out of there. It's just hard for the construction crews to flag, and you come around the kind of blind corner across from the graveyard. So that's uh, that's been pretty active there. Um, we have another project we do about every year, every other year, our department, uh, some street sweeping throughout the township a little bit. We got rapid run. We're doing a Friday just after rush hour is the plan. And this is the four lane section, um, get that cleaned up a little bit. And then we're doing Delhi Pike Saturday morning early where we shouldn't disrupt traffic. And then we so. rent this street sweeper. It's a contractor, and then we clean up. Uh, we'll blow off all the sidewalks, clean up all the big garbage and stuff like that, try to keep get things ready for the walkers in springtime. Okay. So it really cleans it up, makes it nice. Great. Um, Fairbanks' work is still has started pretty heavy. Um, they're prepping, I guess, for the traffic light there, and that most of that work, not just the traffic light, but more paving and stuff like that, is going to go on most of the summer. Can you go back to Rapid Run for a minute? Sure. Rapid Run from Neeb up to Covedale. your street. Other Ebenezer. Way. Other way. Mm -hmm. Covedale. No, All the I four would, lane. Yeah, the the swir the swirl. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Right. It's 
full of litter. Okay, I can turn it in. Can the you county's turn that been one pretty. In to uh, get the litter crew in there. Mm -hmm. They've been it's, pretty active on some litter locations. Yeah, it's, it's it's gotten bad. Okay. Will do. Thank you. I haven't had many litter complaints lately. It got was pretty busy for a little bit, but. No. Well, you just had one. Okay. <laughs> we'll take care of it. Trustee David. Any questions? Ron, thanks for the update on Fairbanks. And uh, again, as a reminder, that's in the city of Cincinnati that is doing that wonderful work on Lower Delhi at Fairbanks and in that area. Ron, how long have you been with Public Works? Um, with Delhi How many years total? Oh, boy. Um, probably close to 30. About 30 years. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, just off the cuff. Sure. <laughs> Help me understand, because I haven't been involved with that. First of all, as I made my opinion very clear, because I travel that road every day, it's ridiculous what they're doing down there, but whatever. Putting the speed bumps all over, and you're causing accidents, making people slam their brakes on when they see the, mm -hmm. the mounds oh. and, and that say hump on them, and then you stop and slam the brakes on. That being said, why do we have speed bumps uphill? They put speed bumps coming up Fairbanks. I don't understand that. So I thought maybe 30 years, you could tell me why they were doing I that. I can tell you the township's policy is that on township streets, we don't do speed bumps, and we've been pretty strict with that. And right. that this is the reason, really. Um, I have not been asked that question because I've never really seen one up a hill. I mean, it, it doesn't but, make a whole lot of sense because you can imagine coming through there and you're finally trying to get home at 530 on a Friday afternoon and people start slamming their brakes on as they're coming up the hill. As you can imagine, it's, it, it, it's fun to watch and that you're creating the, the problems. But I don't understand it. And now sounds like it's going to be several months as they prepare to put a stoplight in mm -hmm. right there, right up from those apartments, I assume, in that bend. Is that where they're going to yes. put it? Yes. Okay. It might be worth a letter to the city or some yeah. other options to, to yeah. just... Well, I, I did contact the city, and I encourage everyone else, as I have been for months, to contact the city of Cincinnati. And I know you've given those contact numbers out before. It, it's a done deal. They're doing what they're doing, and, 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 and they must have a windfall of money to go out and just do all this with all their... Maybe selling the railroad. I don't know. I don't care. But what they're doing to, to the West Side residents and to Delhi is is just absolutely wrong and they are screwballs let me just put it that way what they are doing they are creating problems not solving the problems and if they doubt it then go sit down there and watch the morning rush hour traffic the coming back you're, you're causing more issues than, than what you tried to, to to do and maybe they'll give you an answer on why they have speed bumps going up the hill um, but as I understand it, they're spreading this love all over the city of Cincinnati. Yes. So it's not just a West Side thing. So thank you for that gift, City, and your incredible leadership out there. We really appreciate that. And especially making this one of your last projects that's now been three years up and running with screwed up roads down there, with people's cars getting banged up, tires getting flats. There was no rush at all. And they let, let us just sit there. That, that's great. They definitely put quite a bit of money in the traffic calming is what they call. And I definitely questioned, uh, I guess, the protocol for that area as far as a lot of uh, walkers or shopping centers. I mean, it's kind of, you don't really see a lot of walkers down there. And I'm yeah. assuming it's a safety thing, and that's why they did it. But I My know. last I, point, my last point, and I won't go in. I say screwballs. I mean, not a loving Christian way. The... Uh, <laughs> Coming around the bend, down Fairbanks, heading towards the city. You come down around the bend. Okay, keep going. And that right lane dead ends right into the crosswalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. 30 years, you get it? Traffic calming is all I can say. Traffic calming. I've asked the same questions. I need a pill to calm. They... And, and I'm, I'm not doing one. I'm, am I crazy? No. 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 Thank you. I mean, I'm crazy, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> Uphill in Mount Washington, up Beachmont, is that it? Yeah. And I get it. You want to keep people safe all day long, absolutely. But my goodness gracious, all the other things that we fight about with legislation and we're allowing this, talk about control, my goodness. We could. Yeah. <laughs> and thank we, you, Ron, for clarifying could, our, our position. And, we don't yeah. normally put speed bumps out. but yeah. Ron, I'm back on litter patrol again because Mike just reminded me. Come off 75 going south on Harrison Avenue. Has anybody done that lately? Because it looks like a Rumpke truck lost its load. Mm. All the way around Harrison Avenue in, into the viaduct. 
is that county I mean, who do we need to get a hold of to clean up the entrance to the west side of this city? It's not county. It's either city of Cincinnati or the state of Ohio. It's, which, it is real. It's really bad. Yeah. And, yeah, we stay proactive. And uh, I see some of you have, know exactly where I'm talking about because it's, yeah. We try, our department tries to stay proactive as far as, like, turning in potholes and bumps on uh, Route 50, the 6th Street Viaduct, all through Sailor Park. I mean, we know the Delhi residents travel all this mm -hmm. stuff. So this is, this is the Harrison Avenue exit coming south off of 75. Okay. It's a mess. I haven't seen that one. I, yep. all right. I never leave Delhi. I didn't catch that one. Yeah. <laughs> Except it goes south with your boat. Yeah, yeah right. okay. All right. <laughs> All right, Anything else? Thank you. That's Appreciate it. it. All right, Mike, I wish you'd be a little bit more vocal. Um, administration report, please. <clears throat> All right. Mr. Miller. Yeah. You know, when we finally get finished with, with Delhi Town Square, I think I'm going to miss these little slideshows, but, but for <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy them. Um, you know, just to, just to kind of, uh, highlight some of the things that Sarah was was talking about in the uh, special presentation earlier um, you know with folks coming in now touring the building uh, again to the you know members of our public the building is open for tours so you can go in there see it for yourself now since we don't have the equipment up the furniture's not in we do have some 3d renderings these are the actual renderings of our site uh, so this isn't just a mock-up this is how it will be laid out once um, uh, once everything is is delivered in May. So you know it's kind of a nice walkthrough tour now, so you can see the space and kind of envision how it's going to be filled. Uh, just like our you know the stretch area, I just showed you the exercise area. This is a kind of a rendering looking out over the um, looking out over the. Uh, the lawn area. So I won't talk too much about the uh, or keep showing you pictures of finished rooms, um, but this is just kind of a taste of what you would see if you went out there right now uh, and took a tour with the athletic club. Um, the exciting construction part of the project right now is is pretty much narrowed down to the patio bar. So the patio bar is coming up out of the ground. You can see uh, that's the rear wall coming in and they're starting to block out the uh, you know the bathrooms and, and that area so the, the construction on this will come forward a little bit and that's where the uh, the concession area will be so just a closer uh, update on that there were some delays with um, with permitting on this so you know unfortunately we had some issues with uh, some Hamilton County agencies uh, nothing changed in our plan it was just clarification so it, it, it took the better part of eight weeks to get through so we are anticipating uh, substantial com completion of this before the end of June um, but um, yeah it will not be ready to go when the rest of the building is June 1st okay uh, another fun uh, update the pools are filling you saw a shot with uh, with Sarah's uh, slides earlier but the the entire bottom of the pool is now uh is now filled we only have six and a half feet to go so that will probably take the rest of the week uh we originally talked about filling it you know in two days with a fire hose but you know you get a lot of sediment when you do that so this is doing a clean fill through the through the actual pool system so uh instead so this week instead of showing you a trusty in the pool i'm showing you water in the pools <laughs> so there you go and then uh, finally at the north end of the project uh, we have our sidewalk access finally being formed up and this is uh, at the very north end of our of our main drive in at the pike and we will have a new sidewalk running down to the lawn so that pedestrians can access our site so very exciting milling uh, mill and final paving are uh, ongoing right now um, with the weather as it is, I don't expect it to be finished this week, uh, but it'll still be finished in, you know, um, if not next week, very soon. That's all I have. Great. Thank you. Any questions, Trustee Seavey? I'm good. Trustee Davis? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to economic development. Ms. Pearson, I don't see any agenda items, but you have some updates? 
just a couple um, just to j jump on along with the, uh, the the patio bar we um, as you know we presented the uh, door application last month and had a legal ad put in the paper on April 4th there is a public hearing on, on May 8th that people can come and express opinions about creating the Dora district which will include Dunkin Donuts wild mics and the lawn area of Delhi Town Square Dunkin Donuts will not be selling alcohol they will just allow people to walk in if they have a beer or something with them and um, they, we are working on signage as well with beer communications and some other vendors and then um, there are the Pedretti place which is senior housing was set to begin construction today but with the weather that hasn't happened but you can see the fencing and the bulldozers there to start the site work I imagine it will start Friday or Monday then lastly we were approved for a $15,000 grant from Hamilton County Solid Waste District to purchase additional trash and recycling containers for both the inside of our space in the in the uh, Delhi Town Square for the township as well as, as some outside areas so that the contract was signed today um, by Mr. Miller and we expect to be able to order our items well in advance to be able to meet our, our move-in date. And that's all. All right, thank you. Any questions? No. All right, thank you. Community development is always our favorite part of the meeting. Mr. Roach. <laughs> the best yeah. for last. <laughs> the last part, yeah. All right, we have a couple resolutions. We have resolution in 2024-40, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 306 Anderson Ferry Road, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Yep, good evening, trustees. Yeah, so um, we were only able to remove one this morning. We started out with six. They're all five debris, no grass yet. So some of them you're probably going to recognize the addresses or the properties. Um, mm -hmm. Two out of the two of them are rental units, and the other three are owner occupied. Just so you know, it doesn't just happen with rental units. So. Okay. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution of 2024 41, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 296 Sebastian Court, declaring an emergency and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I will second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Same story. Same old, same old. We have, we did not have we have not had the opportunity to speak with the resident. We have spoke with a neighbor, and the resident just chooses to live like that. So we're going to, if your board chooses to declare it a nuisance, we're going to educate them a little bit and uh, hopefully re rectify the problem. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay, uh, Mr. Roach, what about the health department on something like that? I mean, is they're not living in the backyard, so I guess it yeah. doesn't apply? Or? Right, yeah, no one's living uh, in the exterior of the property. And speaking with the resident, I mean, we have, they haven't seen any rodents or anything like that. So if, if we see rodents or if they would see rodents, then we'd uh, engage the health department. Okay. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2024-42, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 416 Greenwell Avenue, declaring an emergency and dispense with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any further discussion on this resolution? Nope. Nope. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2024-43, oh. declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 551 Greenwell Avenue, declaring an emergency and dispensing, dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any further discussion on this resolution, Mr. Roach? Nope. It is what it is, huh? Okay. <clears throat> I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2024-44, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 430 Foley Road, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. 
I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of the resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Not to be confusing, but we know it is Rosemont Avenue, but the is pretty obvious where it's Foley Road because the paper road behind that runs behind. I, I was wondering where on Foley this yeah, was. Yeah, so okay. We know it is Rosemont. Yeah, okay, very good. <clears throat> I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Libby, please call the roll. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Resolution passes. So you, the Delhi one came off. That's correct. All right. Yep. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Update? Yep. So I think Joy covered about everything that's going on. I mean, everybody knows there's dirt being moved to Take 5 Oil there, the old RB site location. The fence is up. Um, this is just for information only. I've never, in my time here, I've never had this happen, and Mr. Luby, this may interest you as well. Um, on um, February 28th, your board declared a property a nuisance at 435 Vaughn Road, which is, again, Rosemont Avenue. We abated it on March 14th. We submitted the uh, assessment to the Hamilton County Auditor's Office. We received an email today from the Hamilton County Auditor that that property has been taken um, by the state for tax foreclosure. So now you can't place any assessments on the property. So with that being said, uh, um, we're just gonna be out a few bucks for the cleanup. Wonderful. Taken by the state. For tax, for, forfeited to the state for tax foreclosure, or property tax foreclosure. Hmm. Not sheriff sale. No, no, Not just sheriff's see. Sale. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So we I mean, can't have a, a, we can't have a claim on it. Yeah. No, so we no, don't, that's, that's our lien is, is we can't put a little yeah, so, they sent, they, so they sent it back to us. Yeah, you can't, once it's been forfeited to the state, you can't place any special assessments on the property. So I, I don't know if Mr. Pacheco is here. I was hoping to talk with him this evening, but that's a conversation we'll need to have because if a lot of those properties through there, that may happen all through there with those properties eventually. So if the state takes it, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, maybe we have to ask Mr. Pacheco. If the state takes it and they do nothing with it and people start continue to dump on it who do we write to them and say come clean it up it's yours so i don't know if that would go to the land bank for resale because the land bank does take Ooh. a lot of, buy a lot of those properties take a lot of those properties over okay um, for instance there's one on Doe high pike that the land bank has and uh, uh it's been sold to an individual but uh so eventually may end up in the land bank's hands so so we're out the money well mm -hmm. possibly um, Possibly. I, I, I want to look into this a little further. Um, I, I am familiar with this provision, but it's a perfect storm, you know, kind of just, just timing, excuse me, timing wise. Usually, um, you know, usually they're not completing a sale as you're, as you're trying to place the assessment. Um, so we'll, we'll certainly look into this in more detail, possibly set up a meeting with the auditor's office um, and certainly get Mr. Pacheco in, involved as well um, it is possible that you know we will not you know recoup our our funds on this particular item but moving forward we have to be able to do enforcement um, so we will we will for, fully look into this and, and report back later okay appreciate it thank, thank you. you I appreciate it. anything else that's all I got unless you guys have any questions for me <clears throat> nope thank you so much thank Mr. You. Roach all right, I don't have anybody signed in for public comment. Okay, so we'll go into announcement of community events. Rose, I think we might have one. Oh, we do? Oh. Oh, Ron, can you please come up to the microphone, identify yourself, and give your address? Car wash. Car wash. Mm -hmm. all these old, I mean, some of the cars have been there 20 years. I know they're not working. And the property on Rapid Run and Del High Pike, you see the old houses. I mean, they going to clean that up or what are they going for it or with it? Anybody got any insight? I think Mr. Roach does. <laughs> Yep. So with the Allison property, obviously, you know, it's transferred. It's been held up for a while with an uh, engineering study with the county. It's our understanding that the study is completed. And we report to the trustees that's our understanding that the, the, the new owners have chosen to take on another project prior to 
doing the, doing the project at Rapid Run. With that being said, we have engaged with the builder and the project manager and the, also the local engineer, and the builder has been given permission to get bids to have the property raised just for interim get the buildings down. So I can't promise anything. All I know is that the, you know, the builder is in the process of getting bids to have the properties raised, the buildings raised. As far as Lips's property, you know, that's been a kind of ongoing thing. You know, it, it's, you know, they were there prior to local zoning. Some of the cars there I know haven't moved. I've seen them myself. I travel that way all the time. But it's just part of the day-to-day the -day business that they can be there, unfortunately. And with the car wash, with the car wash, um, the lot mulch person who is the lot mulch, lot mulch lot now, um, he's been taking care of the grass and everything around the car wash and everything. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we don't have a property management code is basically why we we can't do something about the... So in, in the past mm -hmm. with the car wash area, we, your board has declared that property a nuisance and we, we, have, sure we have removed the debris from there. We yes. have mowed the grass there, yes. trimmed the weeds there. So with, like I said, with a new tenant at the uh, mulch lot, he's going to be taking, he's, which I, he's going to be taking care of that property right. and watching it for us. I, I remember something about some of that property where the, where all the cars are. Some of that was grandfathered in prior to zoning. Right. Yeah. They, they've been there prior to township adopting zoning. So yes. But the gutters, That's how long they've been there. Yeah. But the gutter's not hanging off now, right? That was resolved. Didn't it fall off? That was off? resolved. We actually removed that off yes. the ground last okay. year. So, yes. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. <clears throat> in the future, we love having guests, but to sign in so we know you know, to, to, to introduce you. So just so you know, but we're glad to have you. Okay. Thank you very much. I didn't see the that's coming that's, out. that's fine. Right. Your name and address, please. Benjamin Sims, a resident at 4274 Point Court. Uh, I had a question. Uh, a few months ago, we had uh, on Point Court, it's a call to sack in the Delshire neighborhood. We had one of the parking spots for Now we're playing musical parking because we had the right number of spots, now we don't. And I just was curious why the parking spot was completely eliminated instead of just being flagged as a no parking during snow emergencies or something equivalent. Mr. Ron, Rippen, Richard, I, think, Mr. That's, I no. think that's you and your 30 years of experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we must have done that a while ago because <laughs> I don't really remember that. I'll have to talk to uh, Foreman on that one. Okay, so it's been a while, but yeah. your recollection, it's been recent? It was about three, four months ago, I believe. Okay. 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 Yeah, we get quite a few of those incoming complaints, and I'll get a phone number and get back to them. Okay. Okay. Will you please make sure you give Mr. Rippinger your number, and then you'll let us know yeah. or so we can let the public know. Yes. Okay. Thank you for right. inquiring and visiting. I appreciate that. Thank you for that. Yes, definitely. Okay. Anybody else? All right, thank you. We appreciate you coming. We love seeing our residents here and asking questions in the right forum. So uh, thank you for that. Okay, um, announcement of community events, Mr. Miller. All right. Uh, Kids, Cops, and Firefighters Queen of Hearts fundraiser is every Friday night at Jim and Jack's on the river. A Queen of Hearts raffle is a fundraising raffle where participants buy tickets for a chance to win a cash prize. It is a 50-50 raffle, but with an added fun twist. It involves a deck of cards turned upside down and numbered 1 through 54. People purchase tickets uh, and assign a number, 1 through 52, to each ticket. Next drawing is Friday at 8 p.m. Uh, the pot will be in excess of $10,000. You do not have to be there to win. You can buy tickets at Jim and Jack's whenever they are open. You win the same amount of money whether, uh, whether or not you are there when the ticket is drawn. Help us support our less fortunate kids in Delhi. Buy some Queen of Hearts tickets. <clears throat> Delhi Branch event, adding herbs to your garden, is Thursday, April 18th uh, from 7 to 8 at the Delhi Library at 5095 Foley Road. The speaker is Sue Vaught from the Herb Society of Greater <laughs> Cincinnati. Uh, who will focus on the benefits of growing herbs, culinary, and aromatic. Registration is required. Please call the library with questions. Delhi Township Shred Day, uh, service provided by Krugler Law, is Saturday, April 27th. 
It will run from 9 to 12 p.m. or when the truck is full. Uh, this will be at the C.O. Harrison parking lot at uh, 585 Neeb Road. The Delhi cleanup day will be Saturday, May 11th. So everybody note it's a different day than the, than the shred day. May 11th from 9 to 1 p.m. This will be held at the senior, uh, excuse me, the Delhi Senior and Community Center on Neeb Road. Please contact Parks and Recreation Department with any questions. Delhi Historical Society Program, Cincinnati's Incline, will be Monday, May 13th at 7 p.m. Uh, this is at the Delhi Community and Senior uh, uh, Senior and Community Center on Neeb Road. Learn how trolleys played an important role in Cincinnati's growth and how and where they were built in this fascinating program presented by Phil Lind, the expert on Cincinnati's public transportation history. All right, thank you. We do not have a need to go into executive session tonight, so if I can have a motion to adjoin, adjourn the meeting. So with no further business to be brought before this board, I move that we adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Yes. 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 Uh, join in or visit us for our next regular meeting on April 24th at 6 p.m.